Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're back to another edition of Shooting in the Kicks. And today I'm bringing you my performance assessment of the Nike Flyknit Hyper Dunk 2016. Okay, like when you put the shoe on, the inner is, is great. Like as soon as you put your foot in, you feel totally locked in. It's like having a really stretchy and comfortable sock on your foot. And, and with that, there's nothing in the shoe at all that would cause any sort of discomfort. But I did get some questions actually. One of the biggest complaints is that the shoe can be tough to put on. So stand by and I'm gonna show you real quick how the easy way at least for me how to put the shoe on. One of the, the issues people said they had with this particular shoe was actually getting it on. <laughs> and, and, and so much so um, I was asked by quite a few people to kind of do I guess show like how I do it or, or a tutorial um, and I know initially the first time I did kind of have an issue well let me not say an issue I just had the fact that it was a little more difficult it took a little more work than normal like just just basically slipping a shoe on um, this is not the shoe for that but really all you really have to do it's quite easy if you just kind of stretch them both sides there so can't. okay so if you once you just put your foot in like that what worked best for me is when you just just like I said just pull the sleeve back or pull yeah just pull it back I'm sorry just pull it back like that and just slide your shoe in and that's it now I'll, I'll show you again on this one again uh, <clears throat> I try to lay it down so you can see it so once you put your foot in like that just pull on the sleeve to, to give you some more room and then just like you was little just wiggle your foot in back and forth and there you have it that's how you put them on no muss no fuss there you go so there's how you put the shoe on now finishing off on the fit like like I was saying it is very good what, the only real issue I had um, from that standpoint from the upper anyway was like I said it's a sliding upper it is very elastic uh, and stretchy, but like, I noticed sometimes you're making say like a very a hard move, a cut or something like that, and when you might go to plant. What I noticed a couple times is like my shoe, like, I felt like like my foot was extending out over um, and extending over the, the the boundary of the footbed, and like it wasn't ever to a point where I thought like, hey. <clears throat> if the shoe's not going to be able to get me back where I need to be because it always did or even like on a stability tip like uh, this could, could could lend to the shoe wanting to tip over anything which wasn't the case I just wasn't really used to that and I found it a little bit disconcerting but outside of that there weren't any issues with the upper the only other thing besides the, the putting the shoe on and everything is the fact that <clears throat> Across the top of the upper there, since it's, it's a very, it's kind of thin, when you lace your shoe, there is no padding. So, if you lace your shoes up really tight, you have to be careful that it doesn't form a pressure point, A, across the top of your foot, or B, it can even make your foot kind of feel like you're falling asleep, so that happened to me with, uh, when I lace them up really tight. So you definitely want to be mindful of that. Um, if you lace your shoe, if you wear thick socks, that may somewhat help to alleviate that a bit, but there's not enough padding under across the top of the foot, so you definitely want to be mindful of that. Now the cushion was my favorite, probably one of my favorite parts of this shoe, and what what it is basically a file on mid you've got a full length zoom. Unlike the, uh, the regular Hyper Dunk, it just has a heel bag and a forefoot bag. This is full length all the way, and it feels good from the moment you put the shoe on. Man, the shoe, it just feels good. It's nothing like full, Fully zoom in my estimation. Anyway, said the shoe felt good. Um, just anything that I wanted to do, it just did a great job providing that good, responsive cushioning that I love from Zoom Air that we've come to expect, and it just never let me down. It that was this was one of the aspects that made this shoe such a joy to wear. Just how good it felt underfoot, and even more so. <clears throat> Once the uh, the midsole started to compress, and that even that made it better, because then once that started happening, I felt like I could really it, it sunk down. I felt like I could really get into the cushion and make it felt even more better. 
more better. It felt even better. Um, so it was, it was just great. And, and it's one of the things I feel like it is robust enough <clears throat> all the way up to center. I mean, look at, like, again, look at the NBA. I mean, DeAndre Jordan was wearing these to let you know uh, the, the, the variety of players that it can accommodate to the biggest and even to the smallest. Now, the only thing that I will say, the caveat is, and I didn't realize this until I'd actually put on the Kyrie 3. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Okay, first. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me go ahead and apologize for taking this other camera. I don't know. It's just due to the nature of this particular gym. There's no bleachers or anything to kind of buffer uh, the, the vibrations of the basketball hitting the floor. And I've tried it in multiple different locations. So <clears throat> just bear with that during this particular part of the video. So I'll be brief. Anyway, I figure that's way you need to really differentiate and try to articulate to you all the difference in court field between the two shoes, not just maybe sit there bumping my gums, but if you actually put one shoe on one foot, one foot on the other foot, and kind of tell you what's going on in real time. So that's what I'm doing. So, like I said, it, it's immediately noticeable the moment you put the shoe on, just the difference in height as far as how far your foot sits off the ground in each shoe. And like I uh, alluded to earlier, it's not bad in the kind of way. By any means, this is not like the, <clears throat> the Air Max 360 DD um, by any stretch. Uh, but it's certainly <clears throat> not as to the level as it is in the Kyrie 3. It's just way better. Um, not in this case saying, one better, it's, it's different. If you like a shoe, would you feel more connected to the, to the court? Then hey, you know what you're to go with. But <clears throat> the difference in court is not good standard. It's not uh, say to the point where it's unstable, but it is going to be higher uh, off the ground, you say, the shoe on my left foot. Um, not really wanting to get into other differences between the shoes because I'm not comparing any other aspects of the shoe, but I did just want to point out um, the difference in court feeling just in case you may have had different expectations. I can go ahead and kind of let you know exactly what you're going to be feeling um, when you're on the court. <coughs> but in my opinion, um, the cushioning and traction uh, takes center stage in prevalence much more so than court field you know, in the way of concern in terms of performance needs of this particular shoe. <clears throat> so, with that being said, let's head back to performance review already in progress. Okay, now what we have here is a picture of the outsole of the shoe. Now, as you can see, there is a great deal of debris attached to the outsole. Now, <clears throat> I took this picture after my very first wearing of the shoe. Now, granted, the court that I played on this particular day was kind of dusty, which is not the normal state of the court, but in hindsight, I'm glad it was because it allowed me to test out the capabilities of the outsole under some degree of duress. So, <clears throat> when it starts off, like you, you, you can see it's a clear outsole. So, it starts off really sticky <clears throat> as such debris does stick to it. Now, what I noticed on that first wearing was how much I had to wipe the shoe to, to constantly clean the outsole because there was, there was a degradation in the quality of the traction that was able to be provided because of all the dust that was constantly sticking to it. Now, over subsequent, over subsequent wearings, as the rubber wore down, it got better that was not as much of a problem, and I feel like the traction got noticeably better. So, again, once the, the, the Hyperdunk, it actually has attributes that, that are consistent with the shoe that would be able to provide good traction. The rubber is, is, is flexible, which allows it to grip the floor very well. 
and this became more noticeable once the uh, debris sticking issue kind of dissipated as I wore the shoe down. So in the window up here that should be in your right hand corner, I'm just going to talk about a few things that are kind of that kind of highlight what I'm the point that I'm getting at here. So <clears throat> as I said earlier, the shoe was was started off very sticky. So on a move like that jab step that I just made, there would be some slippage there. And actually that would even extend to the upper um, where my foot, I didn't feel like it was as planted in the shoe as I would have liked. I got some movement as a result of that slippage. Now, again, as it, as that rubber wore down, when I make a move, say like that jab step that, that I just did, it stuck to the floor um, and, and really provided good traction and allowed me to make the type of moves that you want to make there. Now, granted, some of these are, some of them are not necessarily at game speed, but I did this just to kind of uh, highlight and give you an idea of the point that I was trying to make here. Um, because in a shoe such as this, there, there is a, I feel like even though a wide variety of positions can wear it, um, a shoe like this, that it, I feel like is more guard focused, as the hyperduct line tends to be, um, it has to be able to provide awesome traction. Because if you're, you're on the move, you're making cuts, you're playing defense, um, you're moving laterally and things of that nature, it's got to be able to do that. And that, don't, don't worry about that air ball. And over time, it proved to be excuse me, a shoe that could do that. So traction got better with wear. Now, let me say this. I play with these strictly indoors. You know, sometimes with translucent outsoles, they do tend to lend better to outdoor use. But me personally, I would, I would keep these indoors. Um, I just feel like um, the shoe itself will hold up better um, to indoor ball as opposed to, to outside. But the traction on the Hyperdunk 2016 was good. It was. Now, kind of in closing, really, uh, this was a shoe I wanted to play in. Um, the aesthetics got me into it initially. But once I, I, I actually started playing in the shoe, it was a shoe that I really enjoyed playing in. It provides great traction, great fit. The cushioning is outstanding. Um, and it's just enjoyable to play in. So I would definitely recommend it. Holds up to wear very well. So if you can catch these for a good deal, we absolutely recommend it. Um, and it'll definitely get you through a season of wear. But this has been our Fly Dick Hyperdunk 2016 performance review. And I thank you for sticking with this video and checking it out to the end. We'll be back with more basketball shoe reviews soon. Thanks for watching. Peace.